So Matt, once again, welcome back to another video, another paid request, this time for Jonathan Lindsay. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested requesting any type of videos or topics or randomness, commentaries, re-reviews, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon, both links down below in the info box. And this is for another episode of Batman the Animated Series, this time being Holiday Nights. Now, for what I understand, I could be wrong because I'm not an expert on the Batman show, the animated series was on for a bit until around 1995, and then I guess it got cancelled, I don't know the reasons why it got cancelled, I don't know, it was because the filmmaker, uh, well, I mean, some of them were pretty cinematic, so you could call them filmmakers, maybe they felt it was time to move on, maybe they were just told, hey, take a break for a bit, maybe if just too much to handle, they needed a break. Maybe it was to deal more with Superman the animated series. I don't know the exact reasons. But then apparently in 1997, the higher-ups said, we want another Batman show. So it's kind of a continuation of that. But it's going to be more in the style, animation-wise, of Superman the animated series. And then you got... It seemed a little... Not as, I wouldn't say not as mature, but just, it just doesn't have the same good look. Because they did, they redesigned the characters. The animation style is a bit different. There's more Batgirl. You have Tim Drake as Robin, the like 10 year old or so Robin. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not a fan of the direction they went in. I'm just not. I prefer... The first season or two, however many it was, because again, I'm not an expert, but I just thought it looked better. I liked the way Batman looked better. I liked the the symbol with the little bit of yellow. I liked that the tape was more blue. This was more black. The show has a feels like more of a gray look, and I don't know. It just doesn't have as much of a dynamic look compared to the earlier episodes. And I don't care about Tim Drake as Robin. Did Grayson, I could manage, it manageable. Tim Drake as a 10-year-old Robin, I just find really annoying. And, I mean, this is three short stories in one 20-minute episode. And the third one, Robin's in it, he gets stopped because a bad guy grabs his tape. A fucking bad guy, a fucking bad guy grabs his tape. And he's so fucking small and scrawny. And yeah, he does fight back and... But even in the comics, I always thought it was weird that Batman would travel with a Robin, especially one that's like 10 years old. I always thought that was weird. I'm the guy that prefers Batman by himself. That's personal preference. I just prefer him solo. Solo, you can't see him. But this one is three little episodes put into one. It's a Christmas episode. You have Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy as roommates. They want something for Christmas. Poison Ivy gets this lipstick. Is able to kiss and then control Bruce Wayne. And they go on a shopping spree. And then they have like a montage. I was ready for Madonna's. I'm a material girl in a material world. It's like a montage shopping spree where they're trying on clothes and perfume. While Christmas music is playing. I mean, if I want to see that, I'll watch Die of the Comet. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I'm like, wow, of all the the stories, it's making Bruce Wayne buy them shit for a shopping spree for Christmas. I'm like, really? Uh, that's uh, okay. Bruce Wayne fights back. Goes down the elevator shaft, changes into Batman, gets into this, like a toy factory, and the two, like, knock him back, hit him. I'm like, come on, Batman, you could do better than this. Ultimately, Batman stops them, makes a Christmas tree fall on them. Boom. End of that segment. The second segment was almost pointless. It was Batgirl with 
Harvey Bullock at the top, at another top, Renee Montoya. They're in a toy store. A little boy's a shoplifter. And you come to find out it's Clayface. So the Batgirl changes into her outfit, leads Clayface outside. Hey, I'm over here. Kill me, I'm here. Kill me, I'm here. Cops shoot the lights by the Santa display, fries Clayface. Boom. There's really nothing else to even describe. And then the third one is Joker for New Year's Eve. He vows not to kill anyone for the New Year's, but that means up until then he's going to try to kill as many people as possible. Which is strange because I did in the first story is about two ladies going on a shopping spree for with Bruce Wayne's credit cards, but then the third story is about Joker. How many people can I murder until New Year's? I don't know why. That just seems like such a shift in tone from one to the other. I mean, I don't know. Now the comment that works because it's horror comedy. I don't know. Just for I mean, in the span of twenty minutes, it does seem like a big shift to me. But I mean, yeah, there's. There's humor. I get. I don't know. Maybe if it, if it was just more enjoyable, I would have been fine with it. I don't know. I just don't think the animation when they went to the new Batman adventures was striking. Maybe it's a bit more fluid to help with action scenes, but just the color scheme. Again, at times the backgrounds look a little bit more gray or look a little bit more bland, and they just don't stick out. As much compared to. Because the older seasons. They were in the style. Almost like the Fleischer Superman cartoons. And that's what I loved about it. That's one of the striking. Dynamic things here. Just seems a bit meh. And the redesigns. Just off. I, I don't care about Robin. The 10 year old Tim Drake Robins. Helping Batman stop Joker. Who's going to use this sonic weapon. Against this crowd. Who's wearing these Joker mask it was cool that Batman headbutts someone and uppercuts someone in the face Joker shoots him in the arm okay you know shows that there's dire circumstances that can happen obviously which has been shown before Batman gets liquid on the console fucks up the vice and makes a bell fall on Joker and yeah Robin he's trying to help Batman and literally literally the bad guy just grabs his tape until after he's able to stomp on the bad guy's foot and then do something I'm like I did if you like this Robin that's cool I've never been a fan of I'm not a big Robin guy, and I'm less of a fan of this Tim Drake. For what I understand, you had Dick Grayson. I could deal with them as Robin. You had Jason Todd, who was proved to be so unpopular that they killed him off with Joker pretty much fucking him up with a crowbar and blowing him up, and then that led to Under the Red Hood. And then you had uh, this one, Tim Drake. Now, I read up that this Tim Drake, character-wise, is not exactly like the comics. Like this, the Tim Drake in the comics is a lot more smart and efficient. While this guy is a little bit more annoying. And people said Jason Todd was annoying. So I'm, I'm not the most familiar, I'm not an expert. You can confirm or deny that, but just... Again, you have three little stories... Within a 20 minute span. So they're about 5, 6 minutes a piece. Plus the end. Nice little bit with Gordon and Commissioner Gordon Batman having a bit of coffee. New Year's Day. That was a nice little bit to end it. That was probably I think my favorite part of the, sh the episode. But did you either get a glorified fluff piece at the beginning. You did an inconsequential story with Batgirl and Clayface in the middle. And you get a whole home Joker story in the end. 
Um, I don't know why they can, they decided to do three stories. Obviously, it's supposed to be days going up until New Year's. Because one's like on the 31st. One's on... That's the Joker story. One's on like the 20... I forget the dates. Again, I don't know why they decided to do that. Just, just to be different. But again, it's just a combination of not caring for the direction the show went in. The look-wise, design-wise, adding of these other characters like the Tim Drake Robin. Batgirl, Batgirl was fine, but it doesn't mean I need to see her all the time. Again, just personal preference. I prefer Batman by himself, solo. And again, like the beginning, it's like, oh, it's the girls, they just want to go shopping. Like, nothing else to it, you just want to go shopping? Okay. Just, I don't know, just felt a bit empty. Just felt a bit meh. And I would say Titty... But then, again, the third story is Joker murdered someone. He's going to murder other more people before New Year. So, yeah, it's sort of this weird dynamic of what are they trying to... <laughs> what are they trying to accomplish? But that's just my opinion. I, yeah, I do like Batman the Animated Series, but I, yeah, this new direction with more of the, the Superman anime series, I think that, that works for the Superman show. I don't think you needed to do that for the Batman show. They did it to make it easier on themselves. I don't think it was the right decision in the long run. I would just go, why don't you just continue what worked before? What worked before, why don't you just continue it? But, hey, we don't want to repeat the same thing. Well, you're still having Batman, same voice. Joker, Mark Camel, same voice. The same villain characters with the same voices. You're still in that universe, but you decided to revamp something that did not need revamping in the first place. Why are you fixing something that's not broken? Which they do that in a lot of shows. Not So it's not just live action, they've done it with cartoons as well. I mean, I love the 2003 Ninja Turtles cartoon. Did they need to, well, they cheap it out. When you get to like Back to the Sewers and the animation is lower quality. I mean, I don't hate it, but, I'm a, but uh, it's not as good as the first three or four seasons. Same with this. It's like, yeah. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.